Hello and welcome to Mouse in the Mitten Trivia Pod, a podcast where you can test your Disney trivia knowledge over a variety of topics. My name's Court and I will be your host. Our game will consist of five rounds of six questions covering everything from your basic Disney knowledge to some unknown facts. Each question is worth one point unless otherwise noted. Make sure you let us know what your score is either in the comments here on YouTube or on our Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok page. And hey, if you are planning a Disney vacation sometime in the next year, I would love to help you plan it and get everything taken care of. You can reach me at mouseinthemitten at gmail.com. Would love to get you all set up. Well, hey, I've been gone for a couple weeks. Um, still have a cough that's lingering. You can hear my voice is still getting there, trying to kind of get back in shape. So I had a lot of things planned. I guess we're just going to have to wait on those. Um, until next year, because they tied into Super Bowl and Mardi Gras, Valentine's Day, all that sort of stuff. So we're just going to start out with round one and talk about something that it's been a couple weeks, but I also wrote these questions a couple weeks ago. So round one is all about the Country Bear Jamboree. So obviously, Country Bear Jamboree is closed right now in Disney World for refurb. Super excited for that. Super excited to see what happens next. So all these questions have to do with the Country Bear Jamboree. So let's get started with question number one. True or false, the Country Bear Jamboree was part of the opening day of Disney World. Question number two. Name one of the two other parks you can find the Country Bear Jamboree. Question number three. What 2002 movie came out that was based on the attraction? Question number four. Name two of the three animatronics that are on the wall that interact with the show. Question number five. What is the name of the three girls who are the triplets and have their own song? And question number six. Where did Walt want the Country Bear Jamboree to be originally? All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music, try to come up with those answers, and then I will return. Let's get you some answers here on the Country Bear Jamboree. So question number one, true or false, the Country Bear Jamboree was part of the opening day of Disney World in 1971. That was true. It was one of the opening attractions um, and one of the staples of the park that has been there ever since day one. Um, Again, it's a great show, but also a great way to get out of the heat. Question number two. Name one of the two other parks you could find the Country Bear Jamboree. To be able to get the point there, you either would have, say, Disneyland out in California or Tokyo Disneyland. Both of them have Country Bear Jamboree. Of course, Tokyo is basically a carbon copy of Magic Kingdom, so that makes sense. Question number three. What 2002 movie came out based on the attraction? Well, that would be The Country Bears. Now, they took a little bit of a different detour on the story. Talked about a little bear who is trying to find his way, loves music. Um, basically, it's Coco in bear form. So, still a really cool, really cool story. Question number four. Name two of the three animatronics that are on the wall that interact with the show. Well, to be able to get the point there, you would have to say two of these three. Either Melvin the Moose, Buff the Bison, or Max the Deer. Now, rumors are they are going to be involved with the refurb. They're not going anywhere. I'm just excited to see what they do with them. Question number five. What is the name of the three girls who are the triplets and have their own song without well, be the Sun Bonnet Trio? Their song, I think, is the epitome of one of the reasons why they want to refurb this attraction, get some new songs, that sort of stuff. Well, yes, Big Al's song is one of my favorites just because... It is hilarious. But the Sunbonnet Trio, I think that song is also another reason 
why I think it's time to just revamp that entire attraction. I think they're doing it right. And then question number six. Where did Walt want the Country Bear Jamboree to be originally? Well, he wanted it at Disney's Mineral King Ski Resort. That was a resort that Disney had built in California. He wanted the show there. Uh, it never came to be, but they decided it was such a good idea. At that point, they put it in Disney World and was a good fit there. So again, great attraction. Looking forward to seeing what it looks like when it's all done. Continuing on now into round number two. Round number two is our fast facts round. For this round, all these questions are simple and all these answers are simple, making it really fast. So for this round, today's category is who is left-handed? For this round, I'm gonna give you the name of a Disney princess. You just have to say, are they right-handed or are they left-handed? So let's get started with question number one. Tiana from Princess and the Frog. Question number two. Anna from Frozen. Question number three. Cinderella from Cinderella. Question number four. Jasmine from Aladdin. Question number five. Ariel from The Little Mermaid. And question number six. Mulan from Mulan. So hopefully that was pretty straightforward for you. Hopefully you had a little bit of fun with that one as well. And I'm going to hopefully be able to give you the proof on the ones where you're like, huh? So let's start, get started with question number one. Tiana from Princess and the Frog. Well, she is a lefty. We know that because when she is showing Navi how to Julianne and cut up everything, we can see that she uses her left hand. So that shows that she is a lefty. Question number two. Anna from Frozen. She is a lefty. Now we know this because when she throws the snowball at the snowman, she throws it with her left hand. So that's how we know she's a lefty. Question number three, Cinderella from Cinderella. Well, she is a righty. Now we know that because of the way that she cleans and everything else like that. That's what tells us that she is right-handed. Question number four, Jasmine from Aladdin. Well, she is right-handed as well. No real proof there. Um, some areas we can kind of tell, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward on that one. Question number five. Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Well, she is right-handed. Now, we know that because when she signs the contract, she uses her right hand. So that's how we know that she is right-handed. Last but not least, Mulan from Mulan. She is left-handed. We know that because of the way that she draws her arrow back, she uses her left hand. You use your dominant hand to draw back. Plus, when she held her sword, she used her left hand. So hopefully you enjoyed that, and hopefully you had a little bit of fun as well. Up next is round three, and round three is our connecting the circles. For this round, I'm gonna ask you five questions, and those questions may or may not be Disney-related, but the answers do relate somehow through Disney. And that's going to be your sixth question is what is the connection? So let's get started with question number one. What animal do people run with in Pamplona, Spain? Question number two. What is a small piece of wood used for holding things together and often used as a replacement for a leg by pirates? Question number three. The wife of the President of the United States is often referred to as the first what? Question number four. What is the five letter word for walking heavily or noisily? Question number five. In the US and Canada, what is someone who is an athlete or very into sports, better known as, especially in high school. And question number six is, what is the connection here? So think about that one. Think about those answers. Try to make that connection. I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music, and then I will return. Let's 
see if we can make some connections here. So question number one, what animal do people run with in Pamplona, Spain? That is the bull. They run with bulls through Pamplona, Spain, through the streets of it. The streets are very narrow. It's dangerous. I don't know why people do it. It's not on my list. If you, it's on yours, congratulations. It, it's just not my cup of tea. Question number two. What is a small piece of wood used for holding things together and often used as a replacement of a leg by pirates? That is a peg. Obviously, peg legs. You also use a peg to kind of, you know, if you have like a bunch of tools, you can hang up your tools on them, all that sort of stuff. Answer we are looking for there is peg. Question number three. The wife of the President of the United States is often referred to as the first what? She is often referred to as the first lady. So the answer there we are looking for is lady. And obviously we can apply that to governors as well, but we just, I want to focus on the president there and talk about the bigger picture, I guess. Question number four. What is a five letter word for walking heavily or noisily? The answer we're looking for there is tramp. You tramp through the house. Uh, I guess Trump or Trump would be another good way of saying that as well. But tramp is another way of stomp saying stomping through a house or kind of making those loud noises. Last but not least, question number five. In the U.S. and Canada, what is someone who is an athlete or very into sports better known as, especially in high school, they're better known as a jock. You hear them called jocks all over the place. So that is a nickname to kind of describe someone who's into sports. Usually you hear that in high school. Beyond that, you don't really hear it a whole lot. Probably for the better. So we had answers such as bull, peg, lady, tramp, and jock. Well, all those are the names of not only different dogs in Lady and the Tramp, but they're also in 101 Dalmatians. I recently started watching 101 Dalmatians a lot. My daughter is 18 months old. She loves dogs. So, of course, in the rotation is 101 Dalmatians. And I just noticed one day there's a scene where they're first starting to kind of send the message that the puppies are gone and everything else like that. And you notice, you're like, all those dogs, Lady, Tramp, Bull, Peg, all of them are in that scene. It is really cool and really eye-opening the first time you see it. And you're like, oh, that is awesome. So that is the connection there. Continuing on now into round number four. Round number four is our traditional round in which we talk about a movie anniversary. Now, I originally tried to record an episode a few weeks ago. It did not work well. And I'm just using these questions because they were already written. So this movie anniversary is a little bit late, but it's still a great and classic Disney movie. So we are going to celebrate an anniversary of Sleeping Beauty. Again, a classic Disney movie. One of the last Disney princess movies. Matter of fact, it was the last Disney princess movie that Walt worked on because after Sleeping Beauty, it was another 30 years before The Little Mermaid came out. Hint, hint. And that's when we saw the next princess movie. So let's get started on some questions about the about Sleeping Beauty. I almost said The Little Mermaid there. But we're going to talk about Sleeping Beauty. So question number one. Within two, what year did Sleeping Beauty come out? Question number two. Sleeping Beauty is one of the first princess movies without the name of the princess in the title from Disney. What is Sleeping Beauty's name? Question number three. According to Maleficent, how is the princess supposed to die on her 16th birthday? Question number four. Name two of the three good fairies. Question number five. What other villain did Eleanor Aubrey voice before voicing Maleficent? And question number six. Sleeping Beauty is from France, with other countries having adaptations of their own. What country's version was honored by utilizing the name Briar Rose for the princess while in hiding? All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music, try to come up with those answers, and then I will return. All right, 
right, let's get you some answers here on Sleeping Beauty. So question number one. Within two, what year did Sleeping Beauty come out? Well, it came out January 29, 1959. So in order to get the point there, you would have had to say between 1957 and 1961. I kind of gave it away a little bit in the intro there. They did not come out with another princess movie until The Little Mermaid in 1989. So definitely was a long stretch there. But between then, some really good classic movies as well. Question number two. Sleeping Beauty is one of the first princess movies without the name of the princess in the title from Disney. What is Sleeping Beauty's name? Her name is Aurora. So again, a classic name. Um, you sometimes see her in the parks and you'll hear people say, oh, look, there's Sleeping Beauty. You'll hear sometimes people say, oh, there's Aurora. You know, either one is acceptable. Question number three. According to Maleficent, how is the princess supposed to die on her 16th birthday? Well, she is supposed to die by a prick of her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel. That is very oddly specific. And at that point, that's when the king decided to ban spinning wheels. How they made clothes for the next 16 years, I have no idea. Probably hand sewn. But that's what the spinning wheel was used for was to be able to make clothes. So, I, I you know, that's the question I have to ask. <laughs> question number four. Name two of the three good fairies. Well, to order to get the point there, when I'd say two of these three, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. Those are the three good fairies. They're the ones that watch Aurora while, um, while she's in hiding. Question number five. What other villain did Eleanor Aubrey voice before voicing Maleficent? Well, she was Lady Tremaine in Cinderella. So if you're like, oh, they kind of sound familiar, yeah, it's because it's by the same person. She does alter her voice a little bit for this role compared to Lady Tremaine, but you can definitely tell that it's roughly the same person. It's because it is a very talented voice actress for sure. Last but not least, question number six. Sleeping Beauty is from France, with countries having adaptations of their own. What country's version was honored by utilizing the name Briar Rose for the princess while in hiding? Well, that would be Germany. So we saw a lot of different versions of this classic fairy tale from a lot of different countries. Now, the root of Sleeping Beauty is French. But in order to kind of honor some of the other countries, they put a little couple, uh, put a few hidden gems in there. This is one of them. They gave Aurora the name Briar Rose while she was in hiding. And that was a way to honor the German version of that story as well. So a great little nugget of information there for you as well. But again, a classic movie that still holds up and is a lot of fun. Even when Maleficent turns into a dragon, it does get a little scary. But still, a fantastic movie. Wrapping up today's game, round number five is simply titled, Where is this quote from? For this round, I'm going to give you the a quote from a Disney movie. You just have to tell me who said that quote. Now, if you say where the, mo the movie, you can give yourself the point. That, that'll be entirely up to you. I will tell you the movie when we get to the answers. But I'm looking for who actually said that quote. So let's get started with question number one. Some people are worth melting for. Question number two. Because when I look at you, I can feel it. And I look at you, and I'm home. Question number three. Imagination is the only weapon in the war with reality. Question number four. Our fate lies within us. We only have to be brave enough to see it. Question number five. If you focus on what you left behind, you will never see what lies ahead. And question number six. Happiness is the richest thing we will ever own. All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music and then I will return to wrap up today's game. All right, 
let's wrap up today's game and give you uh, some Disney quotes to kind of chew on for a few for a little while. So question number one. Some people are worth melting for. Of course, that is Olaf from Frozen. The classic Olaf quote that no matter how many times you hear it, especially when you see it in the movie, it just melts your heart. Question number two. Because when I look at you, I can feel it. And I look at you and I'm home. If I had said instead of that one, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, 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 you probably would have knocked it out of the park as well. That's Dory from Finding Nemo. She has this really, you know, the big emotional part where uh, Marlon wants to kind of give up and she has this quote and it's a fantastic one. Question number three. Imagination is the only weapon in the war with reality. Well, that is the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. Now, I cannot do the voice. I am not Jim Cummings, who has recreated a lot of those classic voices, but we can all still hear it in our head. Question number four. Our fate lies within us. You only have to be brave enough to see it. Well, that is, of course, Merida from Brave. Now, if you are like me, you are a huge fan of the nighttime spectaculars, and you try to purposely find a way almost every night, either on TikTok or YouTube, to watch Happily Ever After. Some people are worth melting for, and um, what lies within us, that, that quote, both in that show. So hopefully that was a little bit on the team and be able to knock it right off. Question number five. If you focus on what you left behind, you will never see what lies ahead. That is Gaston from Ratatouille. Again, a great quote from Gaston, which is the in, technically the inner monologue of Remy. So you can give credit to either. I'm okay with that, but technically Gasto said it in Ratatouille. Last but not least, question number six. Happiness is the richest thing we will ever own. Believe it or not, this is from Donald Duck, and it's from the DuckTales movie. I I mean, it's 100% on point, but who expected Donald Duck to be so profane? I mean, that is amazing how happiness is the richest thing we will ever own. That is, how is that Donald Duck? That is just fantastic. I love it. And I have a feeling it, the first time you hear it, you're like, you, you kind of got to do the whole like, hold on, say that again, Donald. But it, yeah, fantastic. Disney is filled with more, with a lot of really good quotes. Will we see versions of this? Yes, we might see this one again sometime down the line. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in this week again. Sorry it's been so long. Again, my voice is kind of getting back there again, but I appreciate you tuning in this week. If you are not already subscribed on YouTube, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Turn on that bell for notifications. If you're not following us on Apple, you can follow us there. You can also listen to us wherever podcasts can be found. Let us know. Leave a five-star review or a comment in the video. What was your score from this week? Make sure you're following us on social media at Mouse in the Mitten, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok. And again, if you are planning a Disney vacation, they're opening up the 2025 date soon. Would love to get you all set up and all taken care of. You can reach me at mouseinthemitten at gmail.com. Would love to make your vacation go from okay to absolutely amazing. Well, hey, my name's Court. The dog's name is Milo. I appreciate you tuning in this week, and I will see you next time.